All right, y'all, this is Love and Hip Hop Miami. This is season one, episode um, five. So Pleasure and Gabby, they meet up. Well, she shows up to uh, his sound check rehearsal. She feels as though he owes her an apology for everything that went down. And, you know, she's like that you failed to tell me that you had someone in your life. And, you know, he feels as though they didn't get that far um, to uh, for him to tell her that. And I'm just like, Pleasure, all you had to say was you had a fucking girlfriend. But see, no, you was trying to have your cake and eat it too and see uh, which one you wanted to be with the most um, without them finding out about each other. So it's like, yeah, whatever, pleasure. So, you know, um, Gabby is like, well, you know, um, I feel like you're um, full of shit. And, you know, uh, what you didn't know is that it didn't just end that night with her, you know, with Shay throwing the ice cream at me. She came to uh, my friend's fashion show or whatever. And she came backstage and um, we got into it again or whatever. And she's like, you know, I just don't trust you at this point. And he's like, oh, so I'm supposed to trust you. So his ears have been open to the streets. And apparently he's been hearing that she's been running around with Prince. And so he's like, you know, he confronts her about it he's like so uh who is prince and everything and um she's like he's a friend that's there for me when you're not and all this other stuff and he's like oh th so did you fuck him and she's like you know i don't have to answer that i'm like oh you, you must have did i was just like Ugh. like <laughs> i'm just saying like prince is just like he just seems like a fucking lame-o you know what i mean so it's just like you know but anyway so you know um they're going back and forth or whatever, and pretty much she's done with him. She don't want nothing else to do with him. So then Shay and P have a conversation, and he shows up to her job or whatever, and, you know, um, she feels as though, you know, Pleasure didn't stick up for her and that she deserves better. And he's like, so, you know, you feel, um, you thought it was cool to be throwing ice cream and shit or whatever. And, I mean, you know, and now listen. I will say, uh, if Shay was going to throw that ice cream at anybody, she should have threw that shit at Pleasure's ass. Because at the end of the day, that is her man and everything. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so, and then plus Gabby didn't even know about her, you know. But anyway, so, um, Shay is like, uh, you put this bitch in a war zone or whatever. And, um, Pleasure is like, uh, but you know, I didn't invite her or nothing like that. And, you know, Shay is like, well, let me fast forward. So she tells him about the situation with uh, Gabby at, you know, Prince's event or whatever. And, you know, uh, how Gabby threw the drink in her face. But like I told y'all last week, I felt like that was kind of get back for Shay throwing that fucking ice cream um, in her damn forehead. So, you know, um, Shay just feels disrespected or whatever. And P is like, you always feel like that and everything. But... Shay has a reason this time to feel disrespected because you supposed to be in a relationship with her. But yet you sitting up here uh, messing around with your ex and everything. One, who we feel like is a fucking opportunist, okay? But you know, um, <clears throat> that's neither here nor there. But you know, um, so yeah, in, in this situation, Shay has a right to feel disrespected. Yeah, Shay do a whole lot, but she has a right to feel disrespected. And you don't want to take accountability for your actions. And I don't like how he just was just trying to put everything on her. Like, like I said, yes, Shay be doing too much or whatever, but... Um, in this situation, she had a right to be upset. It's just that she shouldn't have, you know, threw the ice cream at Gabby or whatever. But anyway, so, you know, uh, he's sitting up here telling her, I think you need anger management or whatever. And, you know, um, she was like, you know, um, I mean, he was like, you know, you said you was going to come to Miami to change. You weren't going to come here on, you know, on that bullshit. And she's like, and you said you wasn't going to lie. So, I mean, it is what it is. And he's saying that, um... He's not lying and he ain't crossed no lines with Gabby. I'm like, fuck out of here. You kissed Gabby. You didn't, you know, tell her when y'all was uh outside at y'all little ice cream event that you had a girlfriend. You let that girl feed you ice cream. Like, come on now, Pleasure. Like, really? So anyways, um, 
Shay, she pretty much feels like she's back in Atlanta, you know, dealing with the hurt and the pain and all this other stuff. And she's like, we could have just stayed friends for all of this because now I feel like I hate you. And he doesn't want her to feel that way. He feels as though they should just be friends or whatever. And she's like, right now, I don't want a friendship with you because I'm still in love with you. And, you know, maybe one day, you know, we could be friends. But right now, uh, you could cancel that shit. And that was the conversation with them. So then we have JoJo and Amara. Um, having a conversation actually Amara shows up to Jojo's store and you know Amara pretty much apologizes to Jojo for leaving her event but you know somebody was there she, somebody was there that she didn't care for too much and Jojo was like oh yeah that Hollywood dude yeah I heard about him um through your little friends and you know uh Jojo informs her that you know Steph and uh Veronica, you know, pretty much was trying to say how Amara was being dramatic and sensitive and all this other stuff. And, you know, uh, JoJo also tells her that, you know, um, yeah, Steph is also also supposed to be working with Hollywood and everything and this, that, and the third. So, you know, um, JoJo, she's like, you know, uh, they were all talking shit and I won't hear for none of that, so I left. And, you know, um... Amara, she's just so shocked to hear all of this and everything. She's like, you know, first Veronica and her bullshit. Now, uh, Steph, a.k.a. My Little Pony. I knew her, Steph's hair reminded me of some shit, but I couldn't think of it. But yeah, My Little Pony. That's going to be her new, <laughs> new little nickname. So anyways, you know, um, Amara is like, okay, well, you know, uh, since... They want to play like that. I'm about to um I'm about to tell Veronica, I mean, I'm about to tell Jojo what the fuck Veronica's been saying about her. So you know, um Amara is like, "Were you and um Veronica cool before, you know, My Little Pony's performance?" And you know, Jojo is like, "Yeah, you know, like we was good, you know." And Amara is like, "Well, she said that she wouldn't fuck with you because you bougie and all this other stuff." And Jojo is like, "What the fuck? Like, you know, I don't sit around and prejudge motherfuckers and everything. And you know, it's my fault. It's not my fault that you know I was born with money and that she broke and yada yada yada. So I'm a check." her next time i see her so then uh later on um amara she meets up with um love and hip-hop um new, love and hip-hop new york's um juju and you know uh she's saying that her and juju grew up together in miami and you know amara starts telling her about the situation with hollywood and you know juju is kind of pretty much saying the same some of the same stuff we all been saying and you know um Juju was like, you know, don't think because, because actually Amara had walked in on Juju doing, um, this photo shoot. I guess Juju was coming out with like this wig line or whatever. And Juju was like, don't get it twisted. Just because I'm doing this wig line or whatever, that doesn't mean I don't wear my natural hair too. You know what I'm saying? Because you guys know Juju is also an Afro Latina. So she's, you know, proud of her roots as well. And, you know, um, Juju has an idea for Amara. She's like, you know what? Um, I want you to do, you know, let's see if we could get Jess because the girl simply Jess was doing the photo shoot for um Juju. So she calls Jess over and says, you know, um, Amara has been having some haters lately, so I want to do a photo shoot for her. Um, you know, pretty much loving the skin that she's in and everything. And I'm like, okay, Mona. <laughs> Shout out to uh Forrest Rock's Mona bitch, okay? Don't sit up here and act like as if Diane just already had this photo shoot planned out. For y'all to sit up here and have all these wigs and stuff. Well, I guess since Ju uh, Juju said she was doing this wig line, I guess that's why she had the wigs out. But still, let's not still act like as if they ain't had this shit planned out for Amara to do this already, okay? So, uh, yeah, Amara's going to do this photo shoot or whatever. And Amara is saying that she's cool with change. She's cool with changing her look, but she's not cool with somebody pressure, pressuring her and make her feel like she has to to be successful in this industry. So then we have, you know, uh, Simply Jess's uh, showcasing. Um, along with some of her other pieces, she wants to showcase uh, some of Amara's photos. So, you know, JoJo, she invited... Uh, Steph, a.k.a. My Little Pony, and Hollywood with Amara's blessing. So Amara already knows, you know, because she gave JoJo permission. So, um, 
Steph and Hollywood, they show up. And, you know, uh, JoJo is saying she just wants to address, you know, what happened the last time they saw each other. And Hollywood was like, oh, I didn't pay too much attention to it. I was just like, oh, here we go with the bullshit. And, you know, um, Steph feels as though he would, I, I mean... Steph, you know, aka My Little Pony, feels as though she wasn't bashing Amara this day and the third. Okay, y'all might have not been necessarily, like, bashing her, like, just straight up talking shit about her. But y'all were, like, talking about her. Y'all wasn't talking about her in a positive way. Y'all were co-signing to Hollywood and what the fuck he was saying. Even if y'all did feel like that, y'all should have never co-signed um, with Hollywood and shit like that. I like that's some disloyal ass shit if you ask me. But anyway, so you know, um Juju pretty much introduces, you know, Amara's, you know, um photos or whatever to everybody. And you know, uh Hollywood uh likes what he sees and everything and he's like, you know, that's what I'm talking about. Uh put Amara in a blonde wig and you know she's the total package or whatever. I'm just like <sighs> so, you know, um, he's sitting up here talking about some, she finally listened to Poppy and everything, and I'm just like, once again, why does he feel like he hot shit for somebody to be doing some shit for him? Like, ew, okay, like, you was not all that, like, for real. So anyways, you know, um, Steph says that she likes the afro the most or whatever. And, you know, um, in the photos, Amara has, like, these different labels, you know, written on her in white paint or whatever. And so then uh, Hollywood talking about some I don't and everything. So Amara finally walks in, you know, um, Hollywood wants to say hey, but he's not sure. So Steph is like, you know, Amara, Hollywood wants to say hey to you or whatever. This day and the third, Amara is like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, I'm here, whatever. So, you know, he speaks and everything. And, you know, he's like, you know, I like your hair. Did you do that for Poppy? And I'm just like, oh, my God, Mona, please spare me this bullshit, okay? So she's like, no, like, uh, uh, don't flatter yourself, okay? So um, Amara thanks JoJo for letting her know about the fake friends and all this other stuff. And, you know, um... Um, Steph is like, you know, um, you know, you talking about me and everything. And, you know, JoJo is like, listen, you were working with, you know, you working with Hollywood, this, that, and the third. That's fake as fuck. And Steph is like, Amara knew. And Amara was like, no, you said your peoples was talking to him. You didn't say that you was going to uh, be working with him, especially when you know the situation. I just thought that that was kind of, you know, shady. And, you know, um, pretty much now, listen. Yes, Steph can work who she wants to work with, you know, um, especially when it comes to this business. And you guys know how I feel about people telling other motherfuckers who they can and can't work with. But in this situation, it, you know, Ho Hollywood just really came off mad disrespectful and came off like, you know, kind of racist as well. So I just feel like that situation is kind of a little bit different. And it, I, I also, too, feel like Hollywood ain't nobody important. Who the fuck is he? Don't nobody know him. Okay, like, let's be honest here. And I'm pretty sure it's plenty of other producers in um, Miami that she could work with. Why she got to, you know, work with him. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, you know, um, Steph is saying to JoJo, oh, like, you know, you saying we was talking shit the whole time or whatever. And JoJo is like, I mean, who the fuck was we talking about the whole time? Like, you like, let's be serious here. So Juju, she chimes in or whatever. And then Hollywood sitting up here talking about some, you know, um, why is she even saying anything? She ain't got nothing to do with this. And Juju, <laughs> She turned her neck so quick into his direction. It was like, motherfucker, I got everything to do with this because Amara is my friend. Like, what are you talking about? And, you know, she came to you because she heard that you was a good producer. I want to know what he produced. Okay, I'm just saying. And, um, you know, the first thing that you do is judge her on her appearance. Like, did you talk to her about her music? Like, you know, like, let's be for real here. You know what I'm saying? Like, did you talk to her about her music? And, you know, um... 
Juju, you know, she's like, it's hard being Afro-Latina and everything. And then Hollywood is like, oh, so you're going to play that card or whatever. And Juju is like, yeah, I'm going to play whatever motherfucking card I want to because you're not so light bright yourself. I said, Boop. <laughs> okay. Um, and he's like, so what are you saying? Uh, being light skin is better or whatever. And Juju was like, no, that's what the fuck you was trying to sit up here and say. Like, don't sit up here and try to twist this shit around on me and everything. And Hollywood claims that's not what he was saying or whatever, this, that, and the third. And he walks away because he's over it. And Amara, she's just, she's over it at this point. You know, she just wants to squash um, squash the situation with Steph or whatever and you know Amara just feels like Steph and Veronica were not understanding where she was coming from like they was just making it about the hair and it wasn't just that and Steph is like you know it does kind of hurt my feelings that you think that I don't understand when I do and you know I've had to face you know uh you know um discrimination being Haitian and everything this day and the third and I'm not gonna lie I'm kind of getting worn out with this whole situation. Um, I mean, yes, it is good that um, we're talking about it. It definitely needs to be talked about. But I do kind of want to, like, move on to the next thing with Amara. Like I told you guys last week, she don't have to get over with, get over the situation with Hollywood. She ain't even got to be cool with him if she don't want to be, you know. But um, I just want to, you know, hear about other stuff that's going on with her. You know what I'm saying? But it is important to talk about. Um, so I don't want to dismiss that. But, yeah. Um, so, anyways, um, Hollywood, he decides to come back because he wants to have a conversation with Amara alone. And he apologizes again. And, you know, he feels like, you know, well, he says that, you know, I know I offended you because, um, what I said offended you or something like that he was saying and that was not his intentions and you know he says that everybody um that has been in his life has says that he doesn't know what to you know say out his mouth sometimes so Amara forgives him and everything and they hug it out whatever but like I told y'all before to this day Hollywood's still popping um that rah-rah shit on social media so whatever I'm, I'm, I'm you know I'm over it so, um, the show picked up, you know, um, well, actually, the show has started where it had, um, ended last week with, uh, the continuation of the whole fashion show, uh, fiasco going on backstage, and, you know, um, Prince goes downstairs, well, actually, Liz gets into it some more with Gabby and, you know, whatever, whatever. Then Prince goes downstairs to try to talk to Liz and, you know, uh, he didn't even know that Pooch and Liz knew each other. And I was like, how long him and Liz was together again and he didn't know that they were friends? Anyway, so, you know, um... He pulls Liz to the side to have a conversation or whatever, this, that, and the third. And Pooch pulls Liz away so they can go or whatever. And, of course, Prince is mad. So then, you know, uh, Pooch and Malik, they meet up. So uh, Meek, I mean, Meek. <laughs> Shout out to Meek, okay? <laughs> Pooch and Malik. They meet up because, you know, uh, Pooch has, you know, um, these, this event coming out, coming up and she needs, uh, Malik to help her with, um, some clothing ideas and, you know, uh, Malik tells her that she's, that he's trying to get back, um, with Jeffrey and, you know, how Jeffrey is all gay power and rainbows and all this other stuff, but, um, he's still not ready to come out yet, but he knows he has to get ready. Otherwise, he's going to lose him again. And he talks about going to Prince's uh, pool party. And he like for her to come. And Pooch is like, no, nah, I'm good or whatever. Like, you know. Um, and Malik is kind of disappointed because, of course, he needs Pooch there to be his beard. Because he feels as though, you know, um, if him and Jeffrey just walk in the party by themselves, that it's going to look suspect. And I'm like. So you don't have uh, straight male friends that you go out and go to parties with? Like, I go to parties and clubs and stuff like that uh, with my female friends all the time. I mean, granted, you know, a lot of times, you know, my male friends, you know, we all hang out. But uh, me and my female friends, we might go off somewhere and leave the, you know, the guys to do their thing or whatever. So, like, does that mean we gay because uh, we sitting up here hanging with, you know... Um, the same sex or whatever, but, um, it's just like, 
yeah, you you still not comfortable with this whole idea of um you know of you being gay and living in your skin or whatever. And so I don't even know why you even doing this with Jeffrey. I don't know why you doing this with Jeffrey. And then Jeffrey really stupid to be sitting up here even fooling around with you when he got Bobby. And like we said, Bobby does do a lot. But at least Bobby is living in his skin and, you know, being him. And I, you know what? I don't like the way Malik just constantly be talking down. Well, let me not jump the gun. I'll wait till next week or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's just when he was just saying that, I was just like. And Michelle was, you know, Michelle was trying to tell him, like, fuck what everybody thinks or whatever. And it's like, yeah, fuck what everybody thinks. Like, you're gay, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Live in your skin. Don't, you know, child, let me, let me move on. So, then uh, we have Pooch's event. And Prince shows up with, you know, some of his friends or whatever. She instantly sees him. And, you know, she walks over and shoes the guy that's with uh, Prince away or whatever. And, you know, um, and I guess he, he's a soccer player or something. So Prince is like, you know, um, do you know who you just did that to? He spent 30000 in the club the other day or whatever. And Pooch is like, okay, but he didn't spend no money with me and everything. And, you know, uh, she's like, you shouldn't be here. And Prince is like, oh, how you uh, crashed and ruined my event and everything. And Pooch is like, listen, let's go somewhere else because I don't want to cause a scene. So he starts blaming her or whatever. Somebody else is not taking accountability for their actions. Like, you know, uh, Prince, you sitting around here, like, you sitting around here, you know, uh, acting like a single man or whatever, knowing that you're in a relationship with Liz or whatever, knowing y'all already have trust issues, and then you possibly might have had sex with your so-called uh, friend of the family, you know what I'm saying, and um, although I did tell y'all I felt like, you know, uh, Shay and them shouldn't have showed up to that boys event to begin with, but I mean, like, let's be real here, Prince, like, come the fuck on. So anyways, you know, Pooch is sitting up here saying that it had nothing to do with her. She turned around and they were gone. But it's like, okay, Michelle, you knew that they was going to come there and cause havoc, especially Shay, okay? Because uh, y'all talked about it at the spa. You just didn't want to, you just kind of detached yourself from the bullshit. That's why you walked away from them because you didn't want that on your image. But, like, let's be for real here. So then, um... He's like, so how did you and Liz become friends? Like, how y'all know each other? And she's like, listen, I DJ, she's a bartender, and we just became friends. It is what it is. He's telling her to stay out his business, and she's like, I can end you and all this other stuff, and, you know, get out of here, and he leaves, and whatever. So then we have Prince's pool party. Malik and Jeffrey, they show up together, and, you know, um... Jeffrey is starting to wonder if he should have worked things out with Bobby since, you know, Malik introducing him as a friend. You know, he was introducing uh, Jeffrey as a friend to uh, Prince and everything. And I'm like, oh, you think like I just like I said, like, Jeffrey, this is the same shit that you and uh, Malik went through before. I don't know why, you know, you would sit up here, although I do feel like you and Malik got a better connection, but I'm, I start, I, I kind of almost feel like now I don't even want y'all to be together because Malik is full of shit. I don't really care for him too much. You making me look at you sideways because of the simple fact that you um, messing around with your ex that's not even ready to come out the closet and you got somebody who is already out the closet like you you know what i'm saying so and then you sitting up here you know cheating on him and not keeping shit 100 so yeah you know but anyways so um Malik talks about them being together for the last three days and you know he wants it to be forever and he wants keys to the crib and i'm just like after three fucking days like i mean i know they say you know uh you know, gay people, they move kind of quick or whatever in uh, relationships, but uh, I'm going to need for you to slow it the hell down, okay? Like, for real. So, anyways, um, that's when Bobby shows up to the scene and busses the shit wide open. <laughs> because Bobby, 
has been keeping tabs on uh, Malik and Jeffrey. And, you know, he saw, like, they little Snapchat that they did together. You know, Prince was in their Snap, too. But he saw, you know, the little Snapchat or whatever. So he knew he had to rush down there and everything. So Bobby is like, okay, party's up or whatever. And Jeffrey is like, uh, we're just at, you know, we're just at a party. You know, uh, it's a public, you know, uh, you know, a public party or whatever, like, what's the problem here? Like, Jeffrey trying to play the shit off or whatever, and, you know, uh, Bobby is like, you know, so I had to find out on Snap that you was with your ex and everything, this, that, and the third, and Jeffrey is like, I really don't give a fuck. I said, ooh, Jeffrey, you shouldn't have said that shit, because next thing you know, Bobby, you know, uh, slaps him, and, you know, they start getting into it, they all up in the bushes and all this other stuff, and, you know, Prince, he's looking from afar, and he's like, what the fuck? is going on here you know what i'm saying and so uh jeffrey he walks out the party and he's yelling at the cameras to, you know telling the cameras to stay away this day and the third and that was the episode you guys and i'm kind of mad that bobby gonna be apologizing to jeffrey next week as if you know uh Jeffrey ain't you know like it's like as if jeffrey jeffrey isn't guilty you know what i'm saying like but whatever. And like I said, y'all, I don't, I don't like Malik at this point because I feel like he do kind of look down on Bobby because Bobby is a more feminine, a more feminine, uh, you know, gay guy or whatever. But we'll talk about that next week, you guys. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you guys come back and I will see you guys in the next video. All right, y'all.